Oh, how do I get this on? Like that? The red light? No, it's... Uh, oh, wait. It's on now. I haven't been since the 60s. How did I let that happen? It's so long since I've been back. I haven't had a reason, really. Not since the station shut down, anyway. I don't often go places without a reason. I wonder if that's even possible. Wonderful Radio London. A bit of a mouthful. People called it Big L as well. That was more catchy. Rolled off the tongue a lot softer than Wonderful Radio London. Although I always like calling it by its full name. To me it really was wonderful, I guess. I mean as a DJ myself. There was a big steel box of a ship called the Galaxy, if I remember well enough. Anchored a few miles offshore, so on a sunny day, you could just about make out the boat shape from the beach. A dark silhouette on the distant horizon. If you had binoculars, you could see small letters spelling out its name. And smaller figures hurrying across its decks, nodding along to whatever they were playing at, at the time. Although whatever was being played always seemed a second out of time with whatever I'd be hearing in the radio. As if there were a couple of steps further into the future. I remember making this journey in the summer of 65 or 66. Can't quite be certain. I travelled fairly often though, mostly to see Keith. He'd play about every Tuesday, Friday and Sunday. And I'd get down there at least once a week if I wasn't working. He also did the ship's maintenance. Handy with tools he was. Always said he could build a bed frame from a splinter if he had to put his mind to it. He liked that quote. Always a screwdriver tucked away somewhere close. And after his show, he'd paddle from the galaxy over to where I'd be sitting on the beach. And I'd listen to him tell tall tales about a pirate or who the next big star was or how the government was trying to shut the station down. He'd talk about the vultures circling around the boat or sly foxes slinking across its decks. I remember thinking he was joking. I keep missing things with this camera. There are a load of deer back there and some men fishing. The camera wouldn't turn on in time. My daughter said I'm a bit crazy yesterday. She asked, why on earth are you going all that way? The boat's not even there anymore. She, she doesn't understand. I know she doesn't. I mean, how could she? She wasn't even a baby those times. Mostly I think she thinks I'm too forgetful or absent-minded to make such a long journey now. Ardu, she calls it. Look that up in the dictionary to remind myself what it meant. But a 15-minute journey is the same as a three-hour one to me these days. I just sit down a bit longer, that's all. It'll be good to see the place again. I hope it hasn't changed too much. All these new apartment blocks. I'm changing trains. At Thorpe Soken, if that's how it's pronounced. Don't think I've been here before though. I think I used to change trains somewhere else. Must be a new route because I don't remember knowing this place existed. Maybe I just never paid here any attention. I still have a few minutes till my next train. It should be all right. The winds are pushing us forward. He should really take his feet off that chair. I can feel the beach nearing, pulling us towards it. The countryside is more dense and vast here. Oh, we've left the modern world behind. It took longer than I remember though. Feels as if it's spread further out. Eating up land bit by bit. Strange weather. But here we are, Frinton on sea. My memories of this place have faded over the years. It's harder to picture so clearly. To remember people's faces, how the cottages cast shadows across its streets, or people who sheltered in these pockets of the shade, away from the sweltering heat, or to remember how the sea left me in a daze as I looked out to the horizon. Maybe it will come back. Strange. It's the same, but it's changed so much. Roads feel longer, feel steeper, places less welcoming. Maybe still welcoming, 
I don't know about inviting, at least to me. It feels designed for a way of life I don't remember here. The streets I skipped, I struggle. 15 paces turned 45. I didn't expect things to be the same, of course. I know that. Places change and things are lost. Maybe I, maybe I expected to step out and be right back where I remember, frozen in time. It seems the place has grown older itself, maybe in a different way to me. But maybe I spoke too soon. Still see the fragments, remnants or reflections of somewhere I knew. Time can't rub out everything. Not the old cafe on the corner we used to have breakfast in. When I peered in, a younger man waved out and I waved in. And I wonder if he knows I waved through the same window an age ago. Maybe to his dad, and now he's doing the exact same. Like a mirror image, buffering through time, but not space. I remember I saw the same collection of ceramic figures lying in the house, on the top row of the chip shop, only looking ever so slightly more weathered. A couple of times I almost thought I saw faces I remembered, but our eyes only ever met for a moment. I think what I wasn't expecting was for, the, was for the place to have grown older too, without me. Apart for so long, I'm not sure what pulls us together now, except memories of radio station no longer here. The boat's not here anymore either, nor is anything I remember it by. No plaque, no sign, no bit of information on display, nothing, like it's been forgotten already, or never even existed. But I haven't. There's something about the sea. It's ever so calm. I can't cry from the winter. The sea doesn't change as quickly. It's too ancient. Washing in and out. The sound is the same as it used to be. My memories feel the most alive here. I think of Keith. I wonder if he thinks of me. Looking out to the horizon, I know I see something not everyone can. And I remember so well. The sea looks unnatural now, as if it contains a gaping hole. A loud absence replaced by a constellation of distant wind farms spinning and spinning and spinning. Stories of the galaxy's afterlife poke their way to my thoughts' surface. Some said it sailed off to China, and others to Croatia, destined for a rich businessman's private parties. There were rumours it was taken up the Thames to Surrey docks for scrap to make shipping containers. A while ago, I remember being told that it happened. That after the station was closed, the boat sailed across the channel to a harbour somewhere in Germany, and a little later sunk to its bottom, to a resting place. Hi, I'm Saul. I came across that film last summer while helping a friend clear out an attic of a house they were moving into. Evelyn, which I'm assuming is or was her name, because it was written onto the CD the film was burned onto, must have lived in or had some sort of attachment to the house at some point in time before us. My friend and I checked her name across the people who were moving out, as well as with the landlord for any records of people who'd lived there previously. Unfortunately, he only had records of tenants during his ownership of the property, which had just been 10 years. Our attempts at reaching previous landlords and owners to him were lost in a bureaucratic chain of unresponsive emails, so after a while we decided to stop searching for records of Evelyn this way. Her whereabouts and condition remain unknown, a mystery. The only things pointing to her existence sat in an old cardboard box, including the CD I mentioned, as well as rug and slightly worn trophy. It was her film that really caught my attention. Her journey felt like a pilgrimage to somewhere both very ordinary, an everyday shrine of sorts, and somewhere lost in time, a memory and not physical place. At the end of her film, Evelyn alluded to the afterlife of the boat, the galaxy, that the radio station had been based from. After researching the galaxy's history, I found that Evelyn was right. The galaxy had been sailed to a harbour in Germany, specifically in Hamburg. It had been retired there for a few years, 
while plans to return it to a pirate radio station off the German coast languished. After these plans fell through and never came to fruition, the boat again sailed a short distance to Kiel, another industrial harbour just north of Hamburg, where the boat was eventually sunk to free up space and make an artificial reef or underwater ecosystem for its local wildlife. The plan was later scrapped after realising the presence of certain old gas tanks in the boat risked polluting the water and its ecosystem. The shipwreck was later salvaged from its watery depths and used as scrap material, sent off to a number of different places for different reasons, to find new leases of life. I had the opportunity to visit Hamburg recently and felt that it was fitting to perform some kind of ceremony, a funeral of sorts, to honour Evelyn. The following is a recording of a live radio broadcast from Hamburg Harbour, a final transmission of Radio London's theme tune, while a replica of the boat floats where the galaxy once did. Thank you, and good night.